Hello. In this video, we are going to prove the following theorem. Suppose z is a complex number. Then for all integers k, cosine of z plus i sine z to the power of k is equal to cosine of kz plus i sine of kz. Now, first of all, we have proven several properties of sine and cosine at this point. One of those properties is the addition formulas, which are these. We've also proven that cosine is an even function and sine is an odd function. In other words, for all complex numbers z, cosine of negative z is equal to cosine of z, and sine of negative z is equal to negative sine of z. We've also proven the property sine squared plus cosine squared is equal to 1. Okay, so now let's get into proving this theorem. To start with the proof, we're actually first going to prove the theorem in the case that k is an integer greater than or equal to 0. So to prove this, we're going to use induction. And so let's start with the base case. In the base case, we're trying to show that this is true in the case where k is equal to 0. So let's start off by writing the left-hand side. Now, we know that anything to the power of 0 is equal to 1, and 1 is equal to 1 plus 0i. And also, we know that cosine of 0 is equal to 1, sine 0 is equal to 0. But then, 0 is equal to 0z, zero, 0 is equal to 0z. Zero, and so we have shown that these two guys are equal. In other words, we have shown that this is true in the case where k is equal to 0. So this completes the base case. Now let's move on to the induction set. In the induction set, we give ourselves an arbitrary integer k greater than or equal to 0, and we assume that this is true. And the whole goal of the induction step is to show that this is also true for k plus 1. So let's write out the left-hand side where we instead have k plus 1. Well, by properties of exponents, we know that this is equal to this, but then we know by the induction hypothesis that this guy is equal to cosine of kz plus i sine of kz. So this is equal to this. And now, if we expand this out, we're going to be doing this times this, plus this times this, plus this times this, plus this times this. And so we get this. But then, we know that i squared is equal to negative 1. So this just becomes a minus sign. And now let's group together the first and last terms. And let's group together the terms that contain i. We'll factor out an i from those two terms. And we get this. But now we can apply the sine and cosine addition formulas. If we apply them, then this is just cosine of kz plus z. This is just sine of kz plus z. But then, in the parentheses, we're going to factor out a z. In the parentheses, we're going to factor out a z. And if we do that, we get this. And so, we have shown that this guy is equal to this guy. In other words, we have shown that this is true, where instead of k, we have k plus 1. So this completes the induction step. And because we've completed both the base case and the induction step, this closes the induction, and so we have proven that this is true for all integers k greater than or equal to 0. So this completes the proof. Right, so we've proven De Moivre's theorem in the case where k is an integer greater than or equal to 0. Now we're going to consider the case where k is an integer less than zero. So we're going to prove De Moivre's theorem for negative integers now. Now, before we get into the proof that this is true for negative integers, 
let's first ask yourself if the proposition makes sense, right? The reason why we're asking ourselves this is because we can only raise non-zero numbers to the power of a negative integer. How do we know that cosine z plus i sine z is non-zero? Well, because if we perform the following operation and we multiply these guys together, you're going to get cosine squared z plus sine squared z, which is equal to 1. So the product of both of these guys is equal to 1, which means neither of them could be 0. So yeah, this guy is non-zero, so we're allowed to raise it to the power of a negative integer. So yeah, the proposition makes sense. So now, let's prove it. Since we're trying to prove a statement about every negative integer, let's give ourselves an arbitrary negative integer. I'll call it k. From here, we want to prove that this is true. Well, let's start out by writing the left-hand side. And now, we're raising a number to the power of a negative integer. Now, in general, if we're raising a number to the power of a negative integer, then we have the following. If w is a non-zero number and k is a negative integer, then w to the k is equal to the reciprocal of w to the power of negative k. In fact, you can define negative integer exponents in this way. So applying this fact to our proof, this is just equal to this. And now, inside the parentheses, we're going to multiply both the numerator and denominator by cosine z minus i sine z. Well then, if we multiply these guys together, we get this. And in the denominator, we have cosine squared plus sine squared, which we know is equal to 1. So this entire thing is just equal to this. And then, using the fact that cosine is an even function, we can replace cosine of z with cosine of negative z. And, since sine is an odd function, we can move the negative sign inside the argument of sine. So we have plus i sine of negative z. So this is what we get. But, remember, we know de Moivre's theorem holds for positive integers. Well, since negative k is a positive integer, we can apply de Moivre's theorem to this. So this must be equal to cosine of negative k times negative z plus i sine of negative k times negative z. And we know that negative k times negative z is equal to kz. And so we have shown that these two guys are equal. In other words, we have shown that this is true in the case where k is a negative integer. So this completes the proof. And so yeah, that's pretty much it for this video.